All right, so on the last video, uh, I did the bottom end of the machine, and uh, I was thinking about using those RC RCBS dies, but I decided not to. So I ordered a uh, three die set from uh, Dylan uh, Carbide dies, and uh, I might go into that if I got time. And then I kind of laid out everything on the bench that I'm going to need to uh, set it up, and also to uh, get started reloading them. So uh, we'll go into some of this stuff. All right, so for the primers, I use the CCI uh, 550s, and the reason that I marked through the uh, small pistol primers is uh, because you can get confused. I kind of just, uh, you know, you got not enough different primers running around. It's easy to grab the wrong box, so I just kind of make it so you look at it before you grab it. And then, as far as powder goes, I use the H110, and the reason I use that is because it's the most versatile as far as uh, how hot and how fast you want to go. That's uh, the H110 on the very bottom there. You see you get a really wide range of uh, velocities. And if you go to the 140 grain bullet, that's the H110. It gives you the most. And then here, it gives you one of the most. And uh, it's a good powder. Works well. So before I go into the dies, um, you can use your pistol and you can also use a uh, case gauge to determine uh, whether your uh, cases are sized right. And uh, these are the ones that are shot. Uh, these are nickel over brass. These are nice. And they will fit in the pistol, but they won't fit in the case gauge. I mean, it'll go about that far and then it stops. So if you wanted to, you could not do a full length resizing. And uh, I'll go into that when I get on the, the, uh, the dies themselves. So if I really wanted to be accurate, I could use a combination of the bullet seating die, the crimping die, and I could just grab, like say, RCBS uses two sizing dies. One is uh, the second one, that's the uh, D-primer. It's got the ball around the case. This one just sides the, uh, the, the sides of the case themselves. So this would probably make the most accurate because I wouldn't be resizing the case. Where this is uh, going to pretty much to a full length resize and um, I'm going to go ahead and use it that way. I don't really believe in making uh, ammunition that can outshoot me. Um, just doesn't make sense. Alright, so uh, let me get a tripod and we'll uh, get started and uh, I'll just show you how to set up uh, for reloading pretty much any pistol ammo. Uh, it'll be quick and maybe there'll be a couple tips. So we're going to start with station one which gets the uh, resizing decapping die takes out the primer, resizes the case. Okay, so that one goes in station one. So you raise your platform all the way up, put your die in. Really simple on pistol. You just run it all the way down until it actually hits the platform and then you just raise it up, I don't know, about thickness of a dime and uh, it's pretty much set. So maybe a half a turn and you're good. So then we're going to bring a case onto the shelf plate. We're going to resize it and leave the handle down with it in the case and then we're going to tighten this guy up right here and that should be all you have to do for that station. Now we'll move on to the uh, powder feeder and belling part. So now we're going to go ahead and set the uh, powder measure which actually bells the case. And I'm going to try to save you a little time here. I'm going to shove that thing all the way in the case where I can, you know, it's right on the edge of where it's going to start belling it. And I'm just going to spin this thing down until, I don't know if you can see in there, uh, it's about, eh, quarter of an inch down is about where you want it and then it's uh, going to be close to ready to adjust it. So that's about where you want it right there. Uh, maybe the thickness of a pencil. So now with the powder measure in the charge position which is uh, that bar is slid all the way out the back you can go ahead and uh, sit it on the press and it should be pretty close and you'll know because you'll be able to get this clamp in there and if you can't and you got to run that die up just a little bit. Like I said, it's about the thickness of a pencil. So now with the clamp loose, this one here, I'm going to turn it down as much as I can with my fingers, and I know that any more turning is going to bell the case. So I'm going to drop it. Let's see if I can hit it the first time. Turn it about a quarter of a turn, and then I'll bring it around and we'll look at it. Well, I almost got it. I could sit the bullet on there but it's a little bit tight. And this can be a good little trick for you. Instead of going all the way around, when you pull the handle, you can roll this thing back to that position again. And all I'm going to do is just give this just another little turn and 
let's see what we got. That's, uh, that's about what you want right there. And I'll show you a close-up of that. I don't know if you can see that, but it, uh, it looks pretty good. It's about what you want. And I might back it off just a hair. I don't like the bell cases very much. Alright, so now I'm going to run it back in there with the adjustment I had. And I backed it off just a hair. I think that was just a little bit too much of a bell. You always want to tighten your dies with your uh, case in there. Uh, that keeps them centered and uh, it just gives you better results. Now in station number three, I'm not going to put anything in there. If I were reloading uh, up to the maximum velocity, I would go ahead and put a powder check in there. But I'm going to be loading uh, mid-range, so no, no, not, not necessary. And number four, I'm going to go ahead and put the uh, bullet seating die, and I'll show you a little trick there as well. Now for this part, I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this round. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a live one on. Same thing, it's going to be a wad cutter. Also in these dies, uh, you got to take this out to uh, switch it for pushing in round nose or pushing in a wad cutter. And put this in. What I'll do, I'll just bring this round up in there and I'm going to spin it till it hits. Um, this is a lot easier than using the uh, dial indicator. And uh, usually, the, you know, factory ammo like this is right on. Even though that's a lead bullet and I'm going to be using... Uh, Full metal jacket. It's about the same thing. And it's really not that critical on uh, revolvers anyway or wheeled guns. And you do want to check it just in case. Make sure it's right. I believe it's 1.59 would be max case length, but this will work. I'm also going to use a factory load to uh, adjust the crimp die. I like to pull it out just because it's easier to spin it. Um, generally here, it's going to stop right there. Uh, this one you're just not going to tighten it down. Call it good. You're going to check that. Make sure that rolled crimp looks good and or what you desire. Right, I got that adjusted out the way I want it. Get rid of this round and uh, we'll go put one through from the beginning. I'm going to drop one through the case feeder. Bring it on. Resize it. I'm not priming or anything. I'm just powdering, bellowing it. Nothing on that station. I'll sit my bullet on there. Seat it, crimp it, and then uh, I'll check it and see what it all looks like. Looks good so far. It's a dummy though. Now you pretty much always want to make sure this stuff goes in your in your weapon well. Um, case gauges are good as well for you know checking everything, your length and. But one thing I like to do for crimping because I can't really explain it to people. And I've been doing it like this for years. I like to use a kinetic bullet puller and uh, see how hard it's going to be to take that thing out of there so that you know that it won't move around while you're shooting the, uh, the gun or the weapon. So it didn't come out. Didn't come out. Didn't come out. Came out. I might be able to loosen up that crimp just a hair. Just a hair, but I want to make sure that I get all that belling out of the case. And if you want to do a good comparison, um, you can always unload one of your live rounds, see what the dent looks like in there. Uh, like I said, I could remove this just a hair, um, but you really don't need to. It's uh, not as big of a deal as people think it is. Some people start talking chamber pressures and all that. That's somewhat true, but not as true as you think. So in the next video, I'll go through the uh, powder measure and loading them. Uh, this one I just pretty much wanted to show you how to set up the dies and and make it a little easy for uh, some of the people that are starting from the beginning. Then also I'll go into why this block is off of there. I showed that on that last video. And that's because I just want to be able to do one primer at a time. Um, because when you're doing the powder measure, that can be a little timely. And every time you cycle that handle, it's going to spit a new primer out here. Uh, it's kind of a pain. So uh, I hope you enjoyed that. I hope that was helpful. And uh, we'll see you on the next one. You guys have a good one. See you.